No losses, I don't do lipo. A few screws loose in the head, I'm a psycho. Promise you the part, this is real as the bite though. Misunderstood, you can call me a typo. I, I shine hotter than the stars in the night though. Hate the who's who's, don't give me a title. Flipping in that set, so I don't worry the price though. Got scratched like my no, leave it to the tribal. I, I ain't even trying to try though. I, I can do this with my eyes closed. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, finally. So today is a monumental day for me because I am finally leaving Dubai after two years. I'm really excited to be going home to my family. It's about time and this whole last year of the pandemic has just taught me that family is the most important thing. So I'm heading home for good and I'm gonna be taking you on the journey of what it's like to travel during a global pandemic. So the last few weeks have been an absolute nightmare, to be honest. I've had to rebook my flights about four times and I'm finally deciding just to go home and stick it out in hotel quarantine because there's a major risk that I might not actually get home if I go somewhere else for 10 days because many countries are now being added to our red list, blocked list of countries in the UK. So it's important to just get home now. So I decided to make a thing out of hotel quarantine. I'm gonna do a video diary every day and I'm going to be showing you what I'm getting up to to pass the time. I'm going to be doing reviews of the food that I get. I'm really nervous about the food so I'm really fingers crossed hoping that it's okay. Comment down below if you have any ideas of what I can be doing because I'm going to be really bored. Tell me what you want to see on a video and I will do it for you within reason. So this is my final day in Dubai and I'm going to be heading to the airport tonight at around 8.30. My first flight leaves at 11.30 and arrives in Bahrain at about midnight, I believe. And then my second flight is at 2 a.m. and it lands in London Heathrow at 6.30 in the morning. And then it's all a bit of a guess. I don't know what's gonna happen. I think I'm gonna get escorted through the airport and taken to a hotel. That's what I've been led to believe. So um, I'm not sure how that's gonna go down, but I will take you on the journey. I'll do a quick tour of my room and what the hotel quarantine sitch is like and then I'll catch up with you tomorrow on the first day of quarantine. So there's not much left to be said other than I'm f***ing excited and I'll see you at the airport later. So I'm here at the airport, finally. I had the most crazy day of repacking. So there was me thinking I was going to repack in just a few hours and then go and have a nice dinner with my friend Matt but unfortunately I just got stuck repacking for the rest of the day it took me so so long my heart is racing um, I left too late to get to the airport but I'm finally got here security was a nightmare because I have so much tech it's ridiculous and it's all in my hand luggage but I finally got through I'm sitting down relaxing I've got my Diet Coke and chicken coleslaw sandwich. What could be better than that? So, flight is at 11.30. It's now 10 o'clock, so I've got a little bit of time just to relax and then I'll head to the gate. This is how much hand luggage I've got. It's absolutely ridiculous. I've got this bag here, which has got my laptop. Yes, God, I thought it wasn't in here my laptop in it. I've got spare medication, AirPods Max. <laughs> I've got these headphones in there as well, which I'm using for monitoring my audio right now. A change of trousers for the long flight, so I can put those on so I don't get cold because it's gonna be freezing. A couple of spare masks in here. Clean spare masks. Put all my hard drives in the bag. Spare medication for two weeks. Then I've got in here, how exciting is this? Look what is in here. It's my HomePod. So I bought a case for my HomePod. So that's that bag. Now wait until you see the big bag. This one is ridiculous and it weighs an absolute ton. So in this one, we've got another laptop, a brand new Mac for Dawn and that has not even been switched on so that's there and um, i've got that is my 24 to 105 lens pouch that has in it zv1 probably should be using that right now because it would be a lot easier but i'm not i've got my insta 360 that's the 4k module actually and i've also got in here oh no that's the 4k module um, that's the screen. 
that's the 360 module there. Um, so I've got those in here. Um, again, that would be useful to use right now, but um, I don't want to look like I'm scoping something out with a camera strapped on me, so that's why I'm not wearing that. A nice big battery pack, because that, you never know when you're gonna need battery. So that's there, that will charge my phone and my iPad. Spare Mac cable charger. Do you like how I label my stuff? How geeky is that? I've got a pouch. In my pouch, I've got some more hard drives, some little solid state drives that I use for editing. This is my favorite sunglasses. All my other glasses I just put in the luggage, but I just thought if my bag got stolen and I lost these, I would be Devo. Luggage scales, which ran out of battery today, and I had to go to the Marina Mall and buy a spare battery, and it took me about an hour because no shops had the right battery. Of course, it ran out on the day I needed it to work. So I bought a spare battery as well. So that never happens again. Aperture MC series lights, which I use for filming all the time. I've just got these in here because if I do a section on the plane, um, I can light myself. My iPad Pro, so that's in there. I've also got my really amazing Sony mic. This is a shotgun mic that sits on the hot shoe and connects di directly in with Sony cameras. I think you can use it with the A7S III and I believe it also works with the ZV-1 and I think some of the other newer Sony cameras, probably maybe the A7R4 and certainly the A1. And last but not least, I have my beautiful Fuji X-T4, which is my pride and joy. I love this camera so much. That is how much tech I've got in my bag, which is totally nuts, totally ridiculous, but that's what happens when you start a YouTube channel when you're living in a foreign country and then you decide to come home. That. See you at the gate. So, I'm now at the gate after running basically through the airport because um, because I was at the wrong end of the airport and it's a long way. And I panicked as I always do and legged it and now I'm sweating, boiling hot, and the flight's not even started. Yeah. Um, but it's better that way around. This is the moment I am leaving Dubai finally. How exciting! absolutely sweating so I can't wait to be chilled in my seat A321R This is definitely Bahrain's take on, well, their own airport. So the first flight was pretty good, it was only an hour. It was one of those flights where you are up in the air and then the next moment you're already coming down. So I was just listening to some Demi Lovato um, with noise cancelling, which was lovely. And now I'm just chilling out here in the lounge, just waiting for the next flight. I've treated myself because I've worked so bloody hard for the last two years in Dubai and I always said to myself, on the way home, I'm going to treat myself, so I have. So I've got some cheese, a little cheese platter, and I've got a little bit of chocolate cake, because you can't go wrong with chocolate cake, and of course, a cup of tea. It is a really beautiful new airport. My flight is boarding in about an hour from now, so I've stopped off for a little snack, a little light snack. I've just had a little cheese plate, and I've also just ordered this. Grilled chicken, yum. Okay, let's see how it tastes. It 
potatoes, chicken, carrots and courgette. Winning combination. It smells really good. Mm. Delicious. And really good because this is a night flight and I think we get served breakfast but I don't think we get dinner. Mm. Oh my god, really good veg. Now I'm going to try the chocolate cake. It's only a small slice. Everything's been COVID proofed. Just means getting into any kind of food. It's like the Krypton factor. Not all of you will know what that is. It smells wonderful. That's really good. It's not too strong. It's got quite a subtle flavour, which I'm glad about because it's dark and I thought it could be really dark chocolate, dark chocolatey. But it's delicious. Perfect finish to a perfect meal before hopefully a perfect flight. So I can't help but wonder what is the hotel going to be like and what's the food going to be like and what's my view going to be? Annoyingly, um, the day you arrive doesn't count as your first day of quarantine. It counts as day zero and you have to do 10 whole days, so 11 nights. But that means that I arrive at 6.30 in the morning, so I have to do a whole day as my day zero. Little tip, if you're coming home and you're gonna go into hotel quarantine, book a flight that gets in just before midnight. I'm looking forward to going home, I cannot wait. I'm really tired now and I could totally sleep, so I think I'm just gonna sleep on the plane and not bother watching any films or doing anything that's gonna keep me up. I'm gonna just go to bed, I think. Anyway, I might check in with you on the plane if I can find the energy to do that. If not, I will see you at London Heathrow. See you later. Now I've got to deal with the whole airport thing, so 
I have no idea how that's going to go. It could be really easy because it's not going to be fine, or it could be really hard because of the pandemic. I have no idea how it's going to be. But we'll see. See you in a bit. Now heading to get to baggage and face immigration. Uh, this should be interesting. Editing Joe here. Um, I realised I hadn't actually told you anything about the airport and how coming into the country was, so I thought I'd just fill in now because it is fairly important if you're interested in what it's like to travel during the pandemic. So I got off the plane and I basically decided I didn't really want to film in the airport because I didn't want to give them any reason to be difficult with me or not let me through. I got into the immigration hall, which is where the passport control desks are. So I got to the guard, she was really awesome, very organised, knew exactly what to do. She took me to another desk down the far end of the immigration hall. Everyone was staring at me and sort of looking at me as if to say, what the hell have you done? And I was really surprised because I thought there would be a ton of other people coming into the quarantine hotel. I had to sign a few bits of paperwork, she stamped a couple of things and then she took me round. Another chap came and collected me and I went to the, the carousel with him and found my bags. Everything was there which was great. Customs agent then came and asked me where I'd been. I got handed over to another chap and then he took me through out of the airport and into one of the car parks where there was a coach waiting. I then just put my bags on the the bottom of the coach and then got on the coach and there was one other guy really nice guy he was a student studying at Surrey University he was sat right at the back of the bus I went and sat in the middle where the like little stairs are that go down and then that was it we um we left and no one else joined and we we got here about five minutes later I um, mean as you can see it's very close when we got there the operation was brilliant probably about six different people all waiting in high vis. I felt like a celebrity being greeted like to a red carpet event or something. It was really weird. They were like, hello sir, how was your flight? I just wasn't expecting that from security people. That's probably a real diss to security people, but they're usually kind of like so focused on their job that they don't have time for pleasantries. So that was really nice. It made me feel really welcome. I went over to reception and checked in and the staff there were lovely. They had these big perspex things up so it was nice and secure and safe for them, which I thought was great. Again, they asked me how my flight was, how my day was. I got a room that was airside and I have a bath as well. So I was kind of so happy. I got given some paperwork. I got given my menu, which was there for me to select the meals I wanted for the rest of my stay. I got taken up to my room by another member of staff. It was so, so easy and they were super, super organized super super lovely as well the whole thing was like clockwork and I was really impressed and I wasn't expecting it to be that seamless I think I was lucky that I had a really early flight and perhaps if I'd come later on in the day I would have had to have waited more nevertheless they had all the staff in place they had the processes in place that everyone knew exactly what they were doing it just felt really good I felt really proud to actually be coming back to a country that was so well organized and was on top of it and after everything that's happened so far with the pandemic up till probably this year, I was, yeah, I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. I got here without being stressed at all. I came in here all relaxed and in a really good mood and happy to start my, well, <laughs> happy to start my quarantine. I'm not sure if I'd say I was happy, but I was comfortable and I was in a good mood and ready to go. And then when I walked into the room, as you'll see in a moment, and I saw the view, I just was suddenly actually happy because I'm a plane geek and I love my planes. I've had the most stressful two weeks before I have got on the plane. It was the paperwork to get to that point. I couldn't book my hotel quarantine for weeks and weeks. It only lets you book it, I think, five days before. But even then, the website would sometimes be down and wouldn't work. And then I didn't get my confirmation email, so I couldn't do my passenger locator form because you need to put the invoice number in the passenger locator form. And I was stressing because it was literally the day before the flight and I still hadn't got it. So I had to then go on Twitter and speak to them and ask them for it. I just want to say as well, that's not the hotel. That's nothing to do with the hotel. That's a separate company called CTM Travel. I'm not going to give them a hard time because they're doing something insanely difficult, complicated and unprecedented. So I'm going to cut them a bit of a slack. If you look on their Twitter, they haven't been getting the best response from people. They're also managing the home test kits for people that aren't from red countries. And people have just been getting to like day seven and they haven't had their day two tests arrive. 
things like that's been happening. So I was kind of dreading booking it and getting it sorted. I had to book all my um, shipping and then I had to get the sh insurance for the shipping sorted, list all the items and work out the values of everything. All of this during a week when I'm handing over to someone who's taking over my role in my last job. And also moving house, <laughs> like moving from my apartment into the hotel that you saw. I was really busy and it was a lot to do. This bit being really easy and just walking into the hotel, being welcomed, being able to just sit down, crash, and just like relax and just watch the planes was honestly just the best scenario. I'm actually really grateful to have these 10 days here because it's forcing me to relax, it's forcing me to chill. And then when I see my family, I'll be really kind of in a really good headspace. It's worked out well. And yes, it was a little bit expensive, but I would rather pay this money and know that I'm here and I'm not being stranded somewhere. I'm literally 30 miles away from my mum and that's it. Safe and sound. So anyway, back to the room tour. Just got to the quarantine hotel and this is my room. A nice big bed. It's not as big as it looks. Actually, it is pretty big. And I've got a nice little desk here with a chair for working on. I've got a massive TV, I think that's a 55. I'm very pleased about that. Got my little tea and coffee selection, which is brilliant. So I'll be drinking lots of tea while I'm here. Um, let's have a look at the bathroom. So, lovely bit of bathroom. It's a little bit small, but that's fine. I can deal with that. But the best thing ever is that I have a bath how amazing is that? And I have a shower with a proper shower head up there. Good cupboard space here. Some um, fairy liquid and some washing up stuff so I can do my own washing of my cutlery and plates. You know, they've not skimped. We've got branded stuff here. The original fairy is the best, you can't beat it. Got a nice little loungy seat, which is great because I will be watching TV on that for some of the time. What an amazing view I have. I can watch planes take off. I can be the train spotter that I've always been. So it looks like people are doing exercise out here, which is great. I will definitely be out there doing some exercise. Um, but I'm gonna be really enjoying watching the planes take off, although there probably won't be that many. Anyway, I'm gonna go and unpack now, and I will catch you later on for the second part, which will be day zero, which is today. See you later.